Secretary of State John Kerry says the U.S. is making progress in the fight to push ISIS out of Iraq's second largest city. Today, Kobani is free. Tikrit is free. Fallujah is free. Ramadi is free. And in time, Mosul, where there's about a 60 percent uh, liberation of the eastern side of the community is inexorably going to be free. Some Iraqi refugees returned to Mosul this week, and the U.S.-backed offensive to retake the city gained momentum. It's estimated there are less than 250,000 Christians left in Iraq, one of the four largest Christian communities in the Middle East. Joining us now is Nina Shea, director of the Hudson Institute's Center for Religious Freedom. Nina, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. What is the situation for Christians right now who are trying to return to their homes in Iraq? Well, there are all the Christians of Nineveh had to flee. There were none left except a few isolated people who could not get out. And they're having a difficult time moving back because their lands have been destroyed. Their homes, businesses, and the infrastructure have all been destroyed by ISIS. So and when you come back in, you don't have running water, you don't have electricity. It's uninhabitable. Right. So, but they're still coming back. They're coming back for short visits to take stock, and they're coming back to the camps and saying, we're going to wait. We don't have the security. What about the UN? What are they doing? Um, I call the UN epic fail. They're doing next Hashtag to yes. fail, right? <laughs> next to nothing for the Christians. They have not given them humanitarian aid in Iraq, except for a few tarps about two years ago. Uh, and they are now planning zero um, reconstruction aid distribution sites in the Christian areas of Nineveh. There are about 20 of these centers to distribute billions of dollars of assistance in, planned for Iraq, and none, zero, are in the Christian areas. You know, Donald Trump is talking about restructuring intelligent operations, and as part of that, how is he going to combat radical Islam and stop this persecution? You're saying the UN isn't helping. Mm -hmm. Can Trump be the white knight? Well, I think, um, yes, he can help, and, and, and enormously. I think we have to start giving our aid directly to the Christians because the UN is not channeling it to them. Um, the other larger groups are getting it instead. Um, I think that he has to really get on top of the education. There's a radicalization process, even within the mainstream of the Middle East. Um, textbooks, and I've analyzed four sets of them from Saudi Arabia over the years, and that they, for example, don't have Israel on the map. They say that Christians aren't protected unless oh. there's a protection contract. They call people apes and pigs. So, so there's, yeah. What you're saying is that we need to get we need to get in there and help with education. We have to stop the radicalization process or this will never end. One thing I saw interesting in the news today, the International Christian Concern released its annual Hall of Shame report. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're familiar with it. And a list of countries where persecution is prevalent. For the first time, the U.S. is on mm -hmm. the list. Now, how serious is this? I cannot imagine that it is... Well, of course, it's number nothing, 12, I think, on this list. Yeah, yeah. It, it never come, it, it cannot compare to the genocide that we're seeing in Iraq and Syria of Christians or what's happening in Egypt or Pakistan, for example, under radical Islam. But there is a disturbing trend in the United States to curtail religious freedom of Christians. So I'm glad it's starting a conversation about that uh, in, the, in the international context. Of course, there's a lot of actives, activism already in the United States, but it's in the Thank international you. context. Thank you, Nina Shea, director of the Hudson Institute's Center for Religious Freedom. Thank you.